just recently bought this D14 tractor and I intend to use it for cutting hay. Now to do so, I must get it ready so I can mount the sickle mower on the back. But, as most Alice Trower owners know, to do this, you have to loosen up the wheel eccentrics mounted on the wheel. There's four of them going around the circumference of the wheel. As many Alice people know, when the eccentrics are not used for a long period of time, they can corrode and basically be non-functional. And at that point, you have to disassemble to get them functional again. In this video, I'm going to show you the way or the technique that I use to free them up. And hopefully it will help you. The main thing you want to remember is safety comes first. There's no need for anyone to get hurt working on equipment. Make sure the tractor is on a flat level ground where it will not roll. And also, when you go to jack up the tractor, make sure the jack is placed in position where it will support the weight of the tractor as well as won't tend to slip or slide off. Now that I have my jack properly in place, I like to go around and take the bolts loose that hold the eccentrics onto the wheel. There's eight of them in total. Now I don't want to take the nuts off. I just want to get them loose. So I do not have to fight trying to get them loose when the tire is laying on the ground. Now that I have all of my mounting bolts loose for the eccentrics, I'm going to go ahead and start loosening and taking off my lug bolts to take the wheel assembly off. One thing I'd like to mention though, when you're jacking up the tractor, Make sure you jack, jack it up, lift it up high enough just, just to get the wheel off the ground. You don't want to go too high. The further you off the ground you are, the more unstable it becomes. And when you go to mount the tire back on, it will be easier to get it back on when it's lower. Now that that's done, we're going to try to free up this wheel. Now this wheel has been on for a long time and it's probably rusted in place. So we may have to use a sludge hammer or other device to try to break it free. Okay, this tire actually came off pretty easy. It took uh, about two hits with the sludge hammer on the back side of the uh, tire and it, it popped right off. So now what we're going to do, we're going to carefully roll the tire. Now this here tire, by the way, does not have fluid in it. So it's, it's a little bit easier to uh, manhandle and maneuver. What we're going to do is lay it flat on the floor. And when you let it go, just stand back and it may bounce a little bit, but don't try to stop it, just let it go where it wants to. Okay. Now I'm going to continue taking out the nuts on the eccentric mounts, like so. Okay. Now the eccentrics mountings are loose. But still, they're still in the clamp position. So there's a lot of pressure of it putting out, pushing out on the rim. 
And the only way that we are going to be able to get these out is if we lay a heavy piece of wood across your wheel assembly and start hitting it with a hammer to try to break it free and push the wheel out from the eccentric mounts. Once the assembly now has fallen apart, make sure that you find all of the pieces. Not only do you have the two bolts that hold the eccentric body onto your wheel, you have the eccentric body itself and also the eccentric block. There's four of these, one for each body, and they fit down inside of the eccentric body like so. Now that I have the eccentric bodies out, I put them in a vise. There is a retaining ring or a spring on the back of each of these eccentric pins. The first thing that I want to try to do is pound the pin through enough to where I can pop that pin or that spring off, retaining spring. Okay, it's moved enough that I can now get a screwdriver in to remove the spring. Be careful not to, to damage or bend this spring. It is fairly soft and it may take a little finessing since it is rusted pretty fast. You may also take a screwdriver and gently pound to break the spring loose. This, this little sp spring off and it may want to fly so, so hold your hand over it so that you can catch it so it don't get away from you and again it's just a little spring and it's easy to uh, bend and damage so, so be very careful and delicate with that okay once that is off I'm going to put penetrating oil on and I'm going to see if I can turn it. Try to get the penetrating oil in on every side of this casting. Now we're going to see if we can rotate it. It's still pretty stout. So, you can keep putting penetrating oil on and letting it soak. Or if you're impatient like I generally am, um, you can go with the mechanical method of slowly tapping it back and forth and working it free. Now the pin is moving. We don't want to hit it too hard. We do not want to uh, mushroom the uh, material over. We are trying to move back and forth just to get it loose.
I'm going to try rotating. I'm going to keep rotating it back and forth to loosen it up as I keep putting lubricating oil, penetrating oil in to try to flush out the, the rust and corrosion that's in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and try, try to tap it out. gets tight on you again, go back to rotating. And also you can push on it as you're rotating and it will walk itself out. There you have the eccentric pin. Now that is freed up and out. Now we have to clean the shoulders of the pin and also the body to clean up all the corrosion and then lubricate it and put it back together. Okay, in this step again, I want to talk about safety one more time because this here is what I have to use. It's, it's basically a wire wheel on a motor. Um, this has no guards on it. Um, this is really what I would say unsafe, um, but it is what I have to use. Uh, I'm going to use this, but I'm going to be as careful as I can. I don't want to get my clothing too close to this because this wire wheel will grab on your clothing and, and, and pull you in. So I, I, I want to prevent that as much as possible, obviously. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, everybody has to keep safety in, in the utmost uh, front of their mind. Okay, I got all four of the pins out. And now I want to clean these up. I'm going to use this wire wheel here. But I don't want to take off a lot of material. You want to basically just shine them up, remove the corrosion, and, and be done. Um, if you get them on a grinding wheel or a file or a, a uh, grinder, um, you start removing material, and then what happens is they start losing their clamping uh, ability or power. And uh, you'll see that when you get the, the wheel put back together and uh, you'll start getting a clunking noise because the, the clamps are not clamping as tight as what they should. And there 
there's one that is cleaned up and ready for reassembly. Now I'll continue on and do the other four. Now we're to the point where we are to clean up the eccentric block. It's important to get this inner surface cleaned up and as smooth as you can without removing uh, the virgin material because the eccentric pin actually rotates inside of that. So the, the, the smoother this is, the easier it will be for you to loosen and tighten up the eccentric pins. Now we have to clean up the eccentric body. Um, so far the best way that I've come up with doing this is simply using a piece of sandpaper with a steel rod to get down inside and clean up the, the rust. So I usually just sit it down in the vise, wrap my sandpaper around the rod you just go back and forth and, and, and turn it so the, the sandpaper goes all the way around the hole, the ID. The main thing here is you want to get out the bulk of the rust. Um, again, you don't want to remove any, any virgin material. You're just after cleaning out the rust and getting it kind of smooth. Um, Anything more than that is, is overkill and you're just taking away from the effect of the eccentric, the clamping ability. So just run it back and forth a few times. Um, I keep the vise loose so I can take it in and out as needed so I can look down the hole, uh, make sure I'm getting it out. Um, there may be uh, a little wheels that you can get to go inside there that will do this faster but for now this is how I have been doing it. Nice, clean, and smooth. Going. All right, now it's time for reassembly, and I like to put a nice layer of anti-seize over all the mating parts, so it protects them from corrosion, and it keeps them rotating nice and, and smoothly. Now I've done my CA this way and those eccentrics have been working flawlessly for the past 16, 17 years. So I, I highly recommend using anti-seize. Lather it up in there. why I got the pin in the vise because now I can simply slide the eccentric body over the eccentric pin 
and you can see how freely it turns. So now I'll go ahead and put on the retaining spring. Be very careful not to over bend these because once you do, they will not hold as well and they'll tend to pop off. It's difficult to get them started, but once you do, they'll snap right in. And there you have an eccentric that works very well, nice and smooth. Now it's time for the reassembly. Now I have my wheel center somewhat lined up where my eccentric bodies bolt on, lined up with the rail on the rim. So now, very important at this point, do not forget to put the eccentric block in the eccentric body at this time. You do not want to go through and disassemble this. So make sure your eccentric block is in place. Then you want to set it on the rail, push it all the way up on the rail, and let it rotate down. Until it gets down on the wheel center. Now at this time, rotate the center until it lines up roughly. Now do the one straight across from it the exact same way. Eccentric block inside the eccentric body. Place on the rail and just let it slide down. To the wheel center. Center. Now you may have to move this around a bit to get it into place. Okay. Once in place, grab your bolts, stick them up from the back side. Make sure that the back of the bolt is inside the rim. Put your lock nut on. I'm sorry. Put your lock washer on. Put your nut on. At this point, you want to keep them loose. You don't want to fasten these down right away because then we have two more to put in. We just want to hold them in place. Just to both sides. Now we're going to repeat the same scenario with the next two. Now that we have the, the uh, tire and wheel in place lined up, we're going to go ahead and put the lug nuts on, our lug bolts in, and uh, mount it. And then we will get on the tractor and spin the wheel in and tighten up the eccentric bodies. Now that I already pre oiled these bolts, they're pretty dry coming out. Put these in here. Get them started good, make sure they're not cross threaded. Tighten those down. 
Let's wheel into it around the hub. You always want to go down across 90 degrees. Do not just go go uh, from one bolt to the next all the way around in a clockwise fashion. Always drop down to the opposing side. over, go all the way around, make sure they're all seated. At this point we're going to let the jack down, get it out of the way, and spin the tire in, and tighten up the eccentric bodies. center so it lock the wheel in place. your eccentrics are in good working order, the only way to keep them that way is to use them. Rotate them every once in a while, spin the wheels in and out, and you won't have any trouble. Hope this helps. God bless.